Hey guys, hope you're well. This is our next edition of our seminar. The seminar that we're looking at now is making your energy change happen. So looking how we can make a change to your energy balance. Um, looking at how in your workplace, we want to ensure that you're not having to work for longer, work for more hours, that what actually you are doing is creating more of an energy balance before more efficiently. So with some straightforward interventions, um, this can significantly increase the capacity that you work at. So what we're gonna do is ask a few questions. Um, thinking about your day, thinking about your daily challenges, um, how do you manage your own personal energy levels? How do you scale your energy levels from one to 10? Do you see the change throughout the day? Do you see a change throughout the whole week? Are they consistent? Do you have those peaks and troughs throughout the day? And when you do have your energy lows, and we all do, how do you choose to get out of that? So what is the difference between you getting your energy lows and you getting your energy highs? What we'll do today is go over the whole principle to energy balance, how we can manage your energy, and how we can get you to optimize your performance in the workplace, but also in turn, enable you to have less hours of working hours and have more energy efficiency. So to do that, we need to create a systematic approach to dealing with these energy lows. We don't want to just cr create a cure to this. We don't want to have that quick fix. We don't want to be able to just turn to that coffee, that power nap to get us out those energy breaks. And we've got to develop a prevention to it, not just a cure. So in turn, we don't want to put a band-aid or bandage over the crack because that leak will just keep coming out in different places. We want to create a bigger, stronger support system to this. And then we want to know what to do and how to deal with it if we do crash. Which I'd like to hope we don't. So. The core problem with working longer hours is to create this balance of energy because time is a resource and we don't want to ensure that we just keep working and working and working and we keep creating these cue fixes to get us through these days. So energy and an energy difference comes from many different factors. It comes from our body, it comes from our, our emotions, it comes from our mind. To recharge ourselves, each individual recognizes the cost of energy depletion. Our behaviors, our responsibilities always change. Regardless of circumstances, regardless of time, what we want to do is create some systematic changes that stops our behaviors being negative, stops our performance having lows. I want us to establish some renewed rituals that can create some positive change and positive behaviors. So in turn, we're going to look at a number of things that can create that energy balance and that can get us to where we need to go. So first off, we're going to look at our physical energy, our body. So with inadequate nutrition, inadequate sleep, exercise and rest, our body will not optimize and perform the way we want to, as well as the ability to manage our emotions and our focus to attention will lack. That can cause fatigue and we want to search those quick fixes, those coffee breaks like I mentioned earlier, that caffeine fix to get us where we need to get out of those energy breaks. So we're going to touch on a number of factors and some deeper understanding to how we can actually create some better energy balance within our body and how we can get us where we need to be. So touching on nutrition, we spoke about that on our last seminar, how nutrition and exercise can benefit our performance, how having high sugary foods, that quick fix can have that negative effect by taking those peaks and troughs throughout our day. We spoke about sleep, how sleep and fatigue and especially fatigue and sleep deprivation can affect not only our performance, our focus, our emotions, and our productivity. 
we spoke about this a lot in depth in our last program on performance of um, of your individual performances through nutrition. Now, we are going to speak about emotions. So when people are able to take control of their emotions, they can improve on quality and energy. They can improve on their external pressures they face in work. And we look at something about creating and buying time, buying time to enable our emotions not to take control over us. So looking at this, we're going to create some action plans or some pointers which we can look at. So sleep patterns, are we getting our correct sleep patterns? Are we at any point in the day feeling tired? Do we feel we're waking up at certain times in the day, in the morning, um, after our alarm clock? Are we going to sleep late at night, which is not getting that sufficient eight to seven hour sleep? And we feel those sleeping patterns are being optimized, which is our fatigue in the day. So do we look at our sleep patterns? How are they? Our meal timings, I know we touched that on our last seminar. With meal timings, how do we structure that throughout the day? Again, it's not for a fat loss process. This is for a process of your optimizing performance of releasing energy sources at the right time. So do we have those split meals in the day? Do we have a breakfast, a lunch, and a tea? Do we have those snacks in the day, which is stupefied in terms of our calories? Do we have enough energy in the day to optimize our performance? Are we crashing in the day and turning to, to quick sugary fixes that we believe are giving us the energy at the right time? Do we? Related to our body on exercise. Do we get up? Do we have alarms on our phone which get us up to go for a walk in a day? So if I sat by our desk every 90 minutes, does that alarm go off? Can we get up? Can we go for that little walk? When that alarm goes off, can we go for a little walk and take a drink break? It's vitally important as we speak about later on, much of hydration in our body, nutritionally fueling, but also hydrationally fueling our body. And that'd be a slide we touch on later on. But those alarms, when we get up and go for a walk, those cue points every 90 minutes, it's of vital importance to uh, optimize the performance or giving ourselves those energy, energy balances back again. We could do busy, sat by the computer, constantly working for three to four hours, sat in these meetings three to four hours, where actually we can get up, we can move, we can optimize our, our body, our performance, our brain, and then get back into those working uh, patterns again, which again, we'll touch on later on in terms of our mind. So starting rituals in the day, when we get up in the morning, are we actually having some day tasks? Do we actually know what to do in the morning or just roll out of bed? Do you get changed? Do you go straight into work? So that 10, 15 minutes in the morning extra, um, I've started to do it lately. Um, I read a lot of books. There's one called The uh, Four Hour Body, where it speaks about all the top entrepreneurs in the, in, 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 the, in the world, some of the top businessmen in the world. And every person has the same sequence. They have some elements of meditation in the morning. You may laugh at that to say meditation, why do I want to meditate? Meditation doesn't have to be you sitting there, you zen in. It could be you sit there, just a, a clear space, a dark space, you know, a light space. Just sat there, eyes closed, deep breathing, thinking for five, 10 minutes of your day to start your day and resetting your day, a starting ritual. There are two great apps. There's a sort of Calm app and a Headspace app. These apps I use, I use the Headspace app. It gives me that, that cue time, it gives me some support, it gives me some accountability. It actually sends me a reminder in the morning to pick up that, that phone and, and to set up that app to um, do med meditation. 10, 15 minutes gets you right in that headspace, gets me um, switched on to that morning ritual. But what it also does, it gets your brain and your emotions thinking correctly so you're ready for um, time to work. Exercise. Yeah, it's the hard one, this one. Exercise is the hardest to create a habit it's the easiest to drop. Myself, coming from a fitness background, obviously uh, loving exercise and, and, and knowing why to exercise it is so important. But at the same breath, you picking up that new ritual of exercising is so difficult. Where setting new sleep times can be easier, setting meal times can be easier. Those walking alarms, those drink alarms can be so much easier. Even that morning ritual of setting up a, a 10 to five minute time for yourself. But creating exercise, exercise is a great way to support the energy balance. It's a great way to set those dopamine levels um, within the body. It's a great way to balance those blood sugar levels in the body. The problem is, is creating that new habit and actually getting out and doing it, knowing what to do, how to do, and why to do. Um, but buying the time, buying the time we mentioned earlier um, regarding the emotions, that time just to stop, gather yourself, 
take some deep breaths in, just settle down and recover and not work life at 110 miles an hour, just recovering, set yourself. You get, might get that email in where you get hundreds of emails and you get back to work and you go after a weekend, just sitting there, taking that deep breath, that recovery time to go into that task you're going to do. And then that break is so, so important and not letting those emotions take over your energy levels and, and those pent up aggression, just recovering and going into your task, that new breath. And the end of day ritual, that making that mind clear, that reducing stress. So when you leave that office, when you leave that desk, it's just shutting that computer up, putting those books away, putting those notes away. And that end ritual is done for the day, just stopping that workload. If not, and if you're constantly working and constantly engaging that work time, you're never actually letting that mind recover, that body recover, and go into that optimization of working that next day. Your brain's always thinking about it, your body's always thinking about it, you can't relax, you can't have that finishing ritual in the day because your body's not ready for it. So just switching off, having that end ritual, knowing when time is day, knowing when it's finishing off. It might be sitting down in bed, recovering. We spoke about sleep patterns. It might be just switching off that computer, switching off that phone, putting those blue lights away, black, dark room, and just recover, sleep. It might be reading that book. It might be your own time, whatever it becomes. It might be putting on a podcast and just listening to some something that puts you in your own time will help with implementations of these new rituals that will give your body that new energy, that mind that new energy, but also give you an opportunity to optimize performance when you go into it next. We also speak about three other, or uh, three and four other factors. Um, this is your mind and your spirit. We'll go into your mind. So multitasking could be one of the worst things that you can decide to do. Actually dealing with different clutter can affect your productivity by at least 25%. Every task that you do, and when you bring in another task on top of that, it actually makes that first task 25% longer than it would have done. So sitting there, reading those emails, and then a phone call comes in, and a text message comes in, and social media starts to just take control of your life. These tasks can take so much longer that you're not apt to actually optimizing the time that you need to perform and do. It sounds so laughable, but we all do it. And the funny thing is, it always takes us longer to complete that task when we try and multitask. Again, like I said, 25% longer it takes to complete a task. It's usually technology which takes over and it doesn't optimize us. It actually affects our systemization and, and, and our processes. So multitasking might sound great at the time, but the more and more we do it, the more stress it puts on our body, the more energy it takes to complete, the more fatigue it takes on our body. And then we also need that quick fix, that coffee, that caffeine to break it up, to keep us going. So just optimizing one task at one time and knowing when that's done is the way we need to go. So linked to that, um, we'll go on to having these breaks and how we work. Studies say that optimization is about a 90 minute is the way that we need to work our tasks. After 90 minutes completed, we finish, we break away, and we do something different. So it might be we go for that walk, we go for that drink, we go for that food, we go for a sit down, we just go for a recover, we go for some deep breaths, and then we go back into our next task. It's not said how long we need to break for. It could be five minutes, it could be 10 minutes, it could be half an hour. But that recovery is so important to where we need to go to and where we need to come to make sure we optimize our performance. Now, spirit, human spirit, it's quite deep this one. However, it also comes onto the meaning of purpose. So if the work you're actually doing maths to you, you could become more positive and energy towards it. And the opposite, if the task isn't meaningful, you'll, meaning for you, and you don't recognize the importance of the task that you're doing, be it for yourself or be it for your business, the potential energy resources you need to gather to go and apply that could be more draining than possible. So you need to understand why you're doing that task, the purpose of that task, the reasoning behind that task. And the more you buy into it, 
the more productive and the more positive your energy can be towards this. So looking at some rituals is important of that. Um, so ultra radiant breaks, that is where we said, having those 90 minute work tasks, then recovery after. Again, it doesn't matter how long that recovery takes, but as long as you can complete those tasks within the day, of splitting at 90 minute recovery works, that is a great way to start applying your time, your efficiency, and your mind focus on that one task. Again, what you do in your break time is your choice. It could be that walk, it could be those getting the steps in, it could be that water, it could be that breathe, it could be having a little bit of time by yourself. It can be the switching off on that work and going to something you want to do. It could be that social media you want to flick through that time. But as soon as that break time is done, you're then back into your workload, that 90 minute quality time. Again, buying that rest time, buying that breathing time, that recovery, that stepping back and just taking that break away from things. Setting those alarms. So when your night minutes is up, the alarm goes off, you set your alarm for uh, the next work time. It might mean you've got a few alarms on your phone, but those alarms just set you up to work at a certain time, pull away from it at a certain time, optimize your performance when you need to, then recover when you need to. We can't be working for three to four hours straight. It's impossible to optimize yourself. Your energy doesn't allow you to do that. And if you feel you need 14 hours in a day to complete these tasks, you're definitely not optimizing your time for those break points to work for. Also, clear yourself to neutral. Meaning at the, the start of the day or at the end of the day, more at the end of the day, you clear that space that we spoke about, you put that computer away, you just stop that reducing friction of the time, you stop that stress levels. You can't go and finish the end of the day knowing you've got these tasks to go next day, next day, next day. Once the day at the end of the day is finished, you can't take the stress at home with you. You need to switch off. Your workplace is completed, your computer's folded. Even the apps are swiped off the phone. Everything is just reset, clear to neutral, that the next day is a new day for you. And you set those rituals again. The new day starts. You have that bit of meditation, have that bit of breathing. It's not waking up, going straight into your tasks, working for seven hours, putting the computer on before you go to bed, watching a little bit of TV, there's blue lights, fetch your sleep patterns, you haven't eaten in a day because you forgot to. This is the life we're turning into, where actually we could get up that five minutes earlier. We could have that little bit of meditation, that little bit of you time, we switch off. We didn't go into our work patterns in the day. We have those nine minute work time breaks. We have that recovery time, that little walk, that little steps are setting our energy bounce again. We have our exercise, our exercise is walks, it's gym time, whatever that exercise looks like. And then in turn, we can switch off the day at the end of the day and we can then go back into our working day efficiently and effectively. That one in turn will make sure we don't have to keep going to these crashes. We don't have to keep turning to these um, sugary food types to, to keep our energy levels high. These caffeine to keep our energy high. Our energy should be high because we're working short set periods of time to optimize our performance. Prioritizing and not procrastinating. So prioritize what you need to do. We speak about four Ds. Like when you get a task, is it need to be something you need to do now? Can you delay that task? Can you delegate that task? Or can you delete that task? Does that task need to be done? Do you need to answer that email there and then? Can you delay it somewhere else? time? Can you actually ask, like, actually ask someone else to do it? Can you delegate it? Or do you have to do it at that point? When tasks come in, you have to prioritize this. You have to prioritize your workload throughout the day. So a good focus in terms of research is that Having an email check only twice a day is a great way to optimize that, that load. So if you're looking at those 90 minute work times, part of that could be just an email check. We check our emails, we respond to those emails. We do that in two blocks of the day. Instead of when an email pops up in the bottom right corner and we turn straight into it, again, that's multitasking. We're going into that task where we're already doing another task. We take that first task 25 minutes longer because we've just got into that email and broken away from it. So having those break times within those emails to optimize our performance too. We spoke about it briefly on um, one of our seminars, but the importance of food and hydration for peak performance. So we look at those pikes and energy. We look at those energy productions, those lows. And it's all associated again with those 
there's eating patterns and energy patterns in those loads our productivity is at lowest our stress levels are lowest our pro oh, sorry our highest sorry our productivity is so low because it's too busy about thinking about food and those food choices and what we're going to have and what we're going to eat to our benefit us our cognition is at the lowest point because we can't get energy to our brain our functionality isn't there so when our blood sugars are so low and then we take in those those chocolate bars or those sweet um, products to spike those energy levels to get the energy levels higher what that does is increase our blood sugar levels and then they'll sharply fall again somewhere else and we go for those peaks and troughs. But as well as those peaks and troughs, we also have lethargy in there. We have hunger levels in there. So when we're at our troughs, our lethargy is so low. We don't want to do anything. And all we want to do is eat. And we want to eat. Then that's an effect on our body composition. It's affecting our mind composition. It's in our cognition. We switch off on the tasks we want to do. We go and have that chocolate bar. We then spike our blood sugar levels, which then gives our energy fix for that 30, 40 minutes. And it drops again. So <clears throat> optimizing again our food, our choice of the food. Because when we have these peaks and troughs through blood sugar levels, our choice of the food are usually bad choice of the food. They're usually sugary snacks, caffeine snacks that help us stimulate it for that short period of time. Not these carbohydrate complex snacks or protein snacks will keep us sustained for longer. We're always after this quick cure, this dopamine effect this satisfaction effect, which in turn will affect our blood sugar levels, which in turn will affect our hunger levels, which in turn will give us that energy crash, and unfortunately will give us that fatigueness, then our performance will be as low as it ever will be. As well as water, firstly, what does water do? It impacts the flow of oxygen to our brain and causes your heart to work and enables us to pump blood around your body more efficiently to our working organs so important it also regulates our body temperature it flushes away toxins from our body so it's important right the problem is most people i encounter don't even drink half the amount of water they need to be taking and consuming in a day studies have shown that in decreased amount of water cause dehydration dehydration causes stress in the body it causes fatigue in the body it increases that cortisol hormone which is a stress hormone which creates headaches in our body it creates cravings for sugary foods high palatable foods high calorific foods so dehydration and low water levels will in turn not only affect our fatigueness affect our dehydration affect our mental capacity because the blood pumping oxygen into our uh, into our vital organs in our brain it also affects our cognition it also affects our thought process it also affects our hunger levels so in turn water is incredibly important to not only our production our efficiency but also our body itself if we start to have low water levels, start to have those dehydration, we start to actually go to the toilet faster and more. So if that starts to happen at night and we start to maybe go to the toilet more in the middle of the night, it affects our sleep patterns. In turn, it affects our sleep patterns. It then makes us more fatigued. We wake up next day more fatigued. Our production is low again. So hydration not only affects our productivity in relation to our dehydration levels, our four percent of food choices, our poor food choices, but it also protect fatigue, affects energy, affects stress levels, but also affects your sleep patterns in turn as well. So staying fully hydrated helps maintain energy levels within the body and in turn will not make us feel hungry, it will not make us feel tired, it will not make us feel fatigued. We speak about alcohol. I can't speak too much about alcohol. I've been teetotal for about 20 years. However, a lot of us like to get back at night, maybe at the weekends, and have that alcohol fix. It might be we uh, switch off in the week and we then want a little bit more alcohol on the weekend. It may be we get back after a stressful day at work and we turn to a beer, a wine. Um, so alcohol, 
it can affect us short termly positively. It gives us that dopamine release, that, that happy hormone. It's that quick cure of energy. It gives that boost, that short period of time. But it's a drug and there are negative effects on this, on energy and lack of it. So with alcohol, it is depressing. It can make us feel low. It can make us feel very lethargic. It does seep our energy. However, not only that, it affects our sleep patterns. So the reason why it affects our sleep patterns for, um, it is a diuretic, which then means it makes us want to go to the toilet. So if we have affected our sleep patterns, we're getting up to go to the toilet in the middle of the night, again, in turn, it's breaking our sleep patterns up. We're not getting a lot of rapid eye movement, REM at night, which means our deep sleep patterns are positively giving us that renovation of energy. Our brain's not relaxing and we're not getting the, the recovery we need to optimize that next day. So it's vitally, vitally important that if we are having alcohol, which again, we can't take to stop having alcohol, it's how, when, and how. With alcohol, alcohol can be in our systems up to four days after consuming it, especially 24 hours to 48 hours after. So the effect alcohol can have on our systems with sleep, with depressant, with, uh, with lethargy, with fatigue, is constant energy in terms of how it's going to go through. So picking and choosing when we're going to have alcohol and how much units of alcohol is going to be vitally important to our optimization. Then caffeine. A few questions for you really is why do you have it? I have it in the morning. And it's, to me, it's a work ritual. I get up in the morning, I do a meditation, I get to work, I'll sit there 15, 20 minutes with a nice coffee, black coffee, and it just gives me that time. It may become a habit for me, but for me, it's not giving me that quick fix. It's not that little bit of energy I need to go through the day. It's maybe a habit, a work ritual you've got. You might have it in your, in, in your, in your workplace. You might have it in your, in your team on the builder's yard that you've got coffee breaks every single time. Do you want a coffee, Dave? Do you want a coffee, Jill? Yep, we'll go there. And after 10 coffees, you're still going. Coffee could be one coffee of about 200 milligrams, maybe less, could be in your system to up to 10 to 12 hours after you've taken it. So coffee can be classed as a bit of a superhero. The power of it, it can make you feel so, so, so good. It increases that alertness, that adrenaline, that brain chemical that makes you keep going for longer and wanting to go for longer. It triggers the release of you pushing the, the, the adrenaline in the body, that fight, that flight and fight response that you keep going. That's what caffeine does to you. It stimulates you. However, what it also does, it gives you that crash. When caffeine starts to be reduced out of the body and we start to then feel a bit more dehydrated, it, again, caffeine is a mild diuretic, which then means we go to the toilet for more, which means then we're dehydrated. And then we feel we have to get into coffee again, where actually it might be water we need. And that caffeine is keeping us going throughout the day, giving those peaks and troughs, just like those sugar levels do. The issue is we start to choose bad habits again. We start to choose snacks that maybe go along with the caffeine breaks. If it's a coffee, we might choose to go through biscuits. Biscuits, that sugary snack, which then is increasing that alertness great for that 10, 15, 25 minutes. But it brings us down into that low, that depressant, where our stimulation is low, our cognition is low, and actually our ability to work is low. Also being aware of how much caffeine we do drink. Like I said, one caffeine or one coffee can last up to 10 to 12 hours in the body. If you're having three or four in a day, that may be one reason why you're not sleeping at night. It may have that negative effect on you at night because you can't get to sleep. The caffeine levels are so high, it's not allowing the adrenaline to reduce in the body. And then that effect of sleep, again, in turn, affects your performance. So, we want to work for longer and create more working hours in the day to get more stuff done. And also have more energy to perform in it. With some straightforward interventions, 
significantly can increase the capacity to work and get things done. What are you going to choose to create a better energy balance in your life? So you don't have to work for longer. But you can create more optimization in your performance and get more out of it. Again, thank you so much for your time today, guys. Hopefully that's spoken about energy levels and how you can create a better energy balance.